another day, <laughs> another dollar. Gonna collect a few dollars today. I was off last night of work. I was supposed to be off tonight too, but as much as <laughs> as much as two nights off in a row uh, sounded good to me. Uh, yeah. Probably need the work, need the money. And uh, a buddy of mine uh, had a shift he didn't want to work, so we uh, I picked it up from him. So it's truly going to be another day, another several dollars tonight. And that's a good thing. There's going to be some individual dollars joined along the way or added along the way. Got all three... <laughs> Current revenue streams working today at social media, percolating along every day, growing every day, generating more revenue every day, creeping me forward day by day. Some days you get sucked back a little bit. <laughs> You get a little financial surprise or a hiccup. You pout about it for a little while. Then you get going again. You wake up and your mind's racing and you get all these negative thoughts and you feel anger towards people and bitterness towards the world and upset and stuff. And then you lay there Oh, not again. Yeah, I'm sure the stuff that happened yesterday or the emotions you're feeling towards various people are real. And all the emotions you're having are real, but they'll pass and it'll be okay. And you turn it around by finding a few things you're grateful for, saying a little prayer in the morning, throwing some love out towards people that are irking you at this moment. Kind of works. Kind of works. And then getting up, making your bed, starting the coffee. Actually, I started the coffee and then I made the bed. I got dressed if this is dressed. Poured my coffee, poured my water. Got my <laughs> set up just so and push that little live button on the uh, phone. So good morning, good morning, good morning to you. My name is Ken Tracy and this is Coffee with Ken. It is Tuesday morning, 6.07 a.m. Hey, look at that, join my team. Tara's sending me some puffy hearts. Sometimes all a guy needs is a puffy heart to make him smile a little bit. I mean, I was ready to smile anyway. I just feel like laughing at the little puffy hearts that Tara sent me. But thank you for the heart puffs, Tara. I appreciate that. Uh, again, it is Tuesday morning. It is 6.07, maybe 6.08 a.m. It is October. <laughs> 22nd. Happy Tuesday. Hey. Ava B is sending me some stuff. Ava B is, I don't even know who Ava, Ava B is. Maybe it's Avenue B. Maybe it's Avenue B. I like to think it's this beautiful woman named Ava sending me these gifts. But if it's Avenue B sending me gifts, I mean, what do they say? You don't look a gift horse in the mouth. And I'm not going to look Ava B or Avenue B, depending on who they are, in the proverbial mouth. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, again, it's Tuesday morning. Happy Tuesday. And this is Coffee with Ken. Uh, am I friendly with my ex-wife? Uh, have a positive attitude today, no matter what. 
Am I friendly with my ex-wife? Uh, yeah, I'd say reasonably with both. Uh, one's fresher than the other, and one has uh, 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 since it's fresher, has more a little more friction currently. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, but with the first ex-wife, certainly, I mean, friendly. But again, uh, it's easy. Yeah, it can be friendly. But it's, yeah, I mean, I guess life happens. Life happens. You get married, you get divorced, you have kids. You do your best, you go forward. Uh, certainly harboring long-term resentment or stuff wouldn't do anybody any good for anybody, for the kids, for you, for the ex-wife or ex-husband, depending on which way you're looking at it. And, uh, yeah, I'd say reasonably friendly. Uh, the Waco kid says, I sound like Larry Lujak. How about some animal stories? I don't have my sidekick, little snot-nosed Tommy here, Waco kid. Uh, somebody's from the Chicago area or at least listened to AM radio in the 70s and 80s, early 80s, where there was a DJ in Chicago named Larry Lujak. And every morning he would do a show, a little his own little show called Animal Stories. And he would, I don't know, get weird stories about animals from around the world, maybe. And, I don't know, read them. And he had a little sidekick they called Little Snot-Nosed Tommy. So I appreciate that reference back to from my childhood, Waco Kid. But anyway, for those that have been watching a while... You know, this is not just a show about me talking. This is also a show about uh, me sharing my love of coffee. And with that in mind, I got a nice hot cup of coffee in front of me. And I am so excited. Uh... I am so excited to have my first sip. And my hope is wherever you are, whatever you're doing, uh, that you got a hot cup of coffee in front of you as well. Cheers to us. Uh, <laughs> I know what it is. Yesterday, I couldn't truly distinguish what flavor I was drinking. Today, I can. I'll have another sip, and then I'll let you know. You guys probably already know. I'm so predictable. Oh, it's the pumpkin spice by Starbucks. Yesterday, I was drinking, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's probably in my head. But I bought some uh, coffees from uh, Meyer a couple weeks back, and I'm not sure if they're quite as nice. I'm worried a little bit, because I'm pretty frugal and I uh, uh, like good deals. But I'm worried, and this is a conflict within, that I'm also a bit of a brand snob. And that I kind of think, because it's in the Starbucks bag, it probably tastes better. And when you start imagining something tastes better or is different or better because it's a certain brand, it becomes better. And I'm not sure going forward, anytime I pour either of those coffees that I bought at Meyer a couple weeks back, that I'm going to be very excited about drinking them. And coffee for me is such a near sacred experience every morning. That to not be excited, to not be excited by the pot I'm pouring just doesn't seem like it starts my day off on the right foot. I think it's important to start your day off on the right foot. Chipbot asks, have you ever thought about trying fresh coffee from a local roaster? 
I mean, I certainly haven't put a whole heck of a lot of thought into that concept, Chip. I don't know where I would buy that coffee. I don't see that coffee. <laughs> so no. So no. I would almost say I have never thought about trying fresh coffee from a local roaster. If some fresh coffee from a local roaster came across my <laughs> cup, into my cup, then I would think about it. But, yeah, I don't need to actively search out some other coffee when I love this so much. But I'd try it. I would try it. If we have any local roasters here in Naperville. I wonder if there's any local coffee roasters in Naperville. Anybody out there, a local roaster, want your coffee highlighted? Although, I'm not going to fake it. If I don't like it, if I bake a pot of your coffee tomorrow, I mean, I'll like it a little bit. I'm not a, I mean, I, you know, I like it a little bit. I'm not that picky. I might even try and fake it a little for the audience. But I am worried the audience would see right through me and into my soul and know that I really want to be drinking the pumpkin spice coffee. But instead, I'm trying to put a happy face on this local roasted coffee because Chip suggested I do. I don't know. See the troubles this could be? I could ruin a local roaster brand with my vast audience. They'd be getting all the publicity and I'd bring out the bag and I'd show you what it is and I'd say it's Ma and Pa's coffee from here in Naperville. Stopped on by my extended stay, brought me six bags of their morning roast. I'm so excited to have my first sip. And then I'd make a face like this and go, ah! pond water. And suddenly Ma and Pa would have to uh, <laughs> close up shop. And that would be more guilt than I would want <laughs> to be involved around my coffee. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Hi, Julissa. Uh, somebody said, keep up the good work. Good morning, Julie Flanagan. How are you? How are you? So anyway, um, yeah, excited to see you. Uh, I got a text from Julie Flanagan last night. I might be revealing too much, but she doesn't seem concerned. Uh, somebody asked if I ever uh, meet people that watch my show. Going to have the pleasure of meeting Julie uh, next week. She's coming into town. and Apparently we're going for lunch, aren't we, Julie? I'm looking forward to that. Although she sent me a text and said, hey, when can I call? <laughs> and I'll be honest, a movie had just started. I was laying on my bed right over there. She asked if I was working last night. I said, no, Julie, I'm not. I'm not working, but a movie just started and I don't want to talk right now. I didn't say it that rudely. I said, hey, <laughs> are you okay? Because a movie just started and I'm just starting to watch it. And uh it turned out to be pretty good. It was the movie Divergent. I don't even know if it was super good, uh, but I watched it and stuck through it all. The name was familiar to me. Uh, the name was familiar to me. And uh, it was that my daughter, Erin, read a book named by, called Divergent, I don't know, three, four years ago or so. And I remember she really loved it. And it kind of stuck with me a little bit. So when the movie popped on, I go, Erin, did you read this book? And she goes, oh, it's my favorite book ever. Movie's not as good. Hold on, who's the actress? Who's the actress in it? The mom, I've been asked before who my dream woman is. And sorry, women out there. Uh, what's her name? I got to think of her name. I got to think of her name, but she's beautiful. Uh, she's beautiful. She's married to a, uh, a race car driver. 
She's from a family of like country singers. She was in uh, Double uh, Indemnity or something like that. Somebody will know. But she's really beautiful. And she's aged well. You know, I don't know how old she is. She's probably 50 years old, but she's still beautiful. Um, what's her name? Somebody? Somebody help me? Ashley Judd. Ashley Judd, yeah, I think is beautiful. I was watching last night, and I'd been asked that before. And I go, eh, I don't know. And then I'd make up something like Jennifer Aniston. Eh, she's good looking too, but eh. Uh, but I think Ashley Judd's really beautiful. In kind of a girl next door sort of way. In kind of a Marianne sort of way. You know what I mean? I think you probably do. Oh, that's good. That is good. So, it's Tuesday morning. This has all been one long-winded introduction. Usually I get into the... I, I work into the meat section of my uh, show at this time and talk about something of consequence or relevance. I don't know if I'm bringing the... If I've, if I've packed the bacon today, packed the beef. Might have no relevance or significance for you today. I thought about that as I got started because I was going, my mind was kind of relaxed a little bit and uh, wondered if I could do a daily show and would I have enough to talk about and what would I say matters and <laughs> every other thought that I have almost every other moment. And uh, yesterday at the beginning of my show, one of my uh, viewers said, I think you're overthinking this. And his voice, or at least, I don't even know if it was a he, I think it was a he, his voice or his typing, what I imagined his voice to sound like, um, came to me this morning and said, you're probably overthinking this. And I said, yes, I probably am. So let's just pour my coffee, and if I have a show where I don't have anything to say at all, and I just sip on my pumpkin spice drooling over Ashley Judd, uh, that'll be just fine. Well, uh, Sherry from Florida says she misses when I used to do my shows around downtown Naperville. Yeah, no, I could see that, Sherry. Uh, I could see that. Circumstances were different. Circumstances were definitely different. I don't want to go into the circumstances that were so def definitely different. Uh, and I still probably hop on for live from downtown Naperville from time to time. Uh, but yeah, I didn't have a coffee. I'll just say, I didn't have a coffee maker where I was staying uh, for most of the time that I was doing my show around downtown Naperville. And that's not totally true. Occasionally, uh, a year or two ago, I'd hop down and even on a snowy day, I went live on a snowy day in downtown Naperville. But I'll tell you what. Okay, here's what it is, Sherry. If I'm going to do it every day and stick to a schedule, uh, you know, I don't want to drive to downtown Naperville and get all bundled up and find a spot to do it and every day. Uh, that just doesn't sound fun to me. You, you know, maybe once in a while I can. Uh, once in a while I can. But if I'm going to hop on every day, you know, I only woke up half an hour ago or something like that. And to pack up my coffee and get a coat on. And I don't even know what the weather's like out there. It's still dark outside. Uh, it would just be hard to do. <laughs> Some people say work is hard. Hello from Iowa, Maryland. Somebody just called me handsome. <laughs> Your flattery will get you anywhere, I promise you that. That's not entirely true. Especially if you're a man. It's usually a man that says that. It is usually a man that is saying that. How am I paying for my hotel room? Uh, well, again, it's an extended stay, truth be told. 
and it costs about uh, $1,800 a month. Sixteen to eighteen hundred, depending on how much I get for the rate, and it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I wait tables every, not every night. Uh, probably on average five nights a week. Uh, I was a realtor seventeen years. I have a lot of financial responsibilities, and uh, uh, I'm just doing my best to cover my financial responsibilities and keep a roof over my head, to be honest with you right now. So those would be some of the ways I'm paying, or some of that situation. I make a little money on social media. I'm going live right now on TikTok, and I posted a video uh, yesterday. And for those that care about the behind the scenes, uh, each social media has a different way to uh, each social media platform is a different way to compensate content creators. Oh, I know what I was thinking about, but maybe I'll try and finish this story. Um, and uh, I get paid a little bit from three different social media platforms. And this show was never started about the money. This show was never started about the money and I'll get to where this show started and how it started in a moment. Uh, but as a guy with financial responsibilities, struggling to pay a roof, keep a roof over his head, and uh, actually almost didn't have a choice, but went out to Yellowstone this spring because uh, I couldn't cover my financial responsibilities and keep a roof over my head. So I went out to Yellowstone and worked for a few months and got some confidence and had an adventure and came back and started waiting tables here and work every shift I can. Uh, to keep this roof over my head and cover my financial responsibilities. So that's how I'm doing it. Um, World Motivation asked if I'm still day trading. No, no, I'm not. Uh, again, I don't, I, I don't long to. It was just kind of uh, gambling for me. It was just kind of gambling for me and didn't feel good at all. Hank Hoover said, why not going back to selling homes? Because selling homes sucked. <laughs> I make more money waiting tables. I make, or probably realistically, I make the same waiting tables as I did to selling homes. As I did selling homes. But I know every night I'm going to make a couple hundred bucks. Ish. You know, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. Yeah, well, I won't argue with you. Hank Hoover said there's more money selling homes. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I've done it. You know, yeah, I've had big years. I made, I think my record year selling homes was 108 grand. You know, that's pretty good. Uh, and I won't make that weight in tables. But I do know tonight I'm going to make, you know, money. And I'll tell you what, for a guy that uh, needs to make money, it's nice knowing that I'm gonna go in to work and make money. And as a realtor, every once in a while, you'd get a really big check. Uh, and maybe if you averaged it out over uh, the year, you know, I'd make six grand a month or something like that. But I'll tell you that six grand goes quickly, even the 12 grand, if you get a big one, goes quickly. And there were a lot of really hard months. And I think I'm in the right spot doing the right thing um, right now. And building this coffee with Ken and making a little money. And the little money's starting to become not so little. You know, you guys might laugh, but TikTok's paid me, will pay me roughly 150 bucks for the last 30 days. Pays a bill. Feels good. And that's five times what it was a few months ago. And if it keeps growing, and I was talking about the video I posted yesterday. Uh, it was why am I... <laughs> I find my videos on TikTok because all the videos, most of the videos I do come from what I'm doing right now. And in, I go back and edit these videos and post shorts and reels and uh, 
TikToks on various social media platforms. And um, for a while, I was trying to find little short, tiny videos to post, but TikTok kind of changed what they do. And I think what their change benefits me because apparently I'm pretty good at telling a story. And my stories don't have to be about a whole heck of a lot. And somebody asked me a few days ago why I'm in a hotel room. And I started telling the story and I told the story of riding my scooter out to Yellowstone and riding back and that's how the story ended. And it was about a five minute video that when I went live this morning has been seen 43,000 times. And that video will pay me somewhere between 50 and $100. <laughs> and I see as a businessman, I'm going, huh, that didn't cost me anything to make. I've got loads of stories. I've got tons of stories. And by doing this live every morning, uh, those stories come out because people ask me questions. Uh, Goose, any advice for someone in their 20s trying to figure things out, especially financially? Goose, keep going. I mean, I'm trying to figure out. You're in your 20s. you got so much time ahead of you. Uh, most people will tell you to uh, start investing for your retirement and put your money in an IRA or a 401k. I would say if you work for a company uh, that offers a 401k and is going to match the uh, any contributions you make to any degree, you should do that. Um, so start there. Uh, but if you want to figure things out, especially financially, you're, you're looking at a guy who's 56 years old, whose current financial plan is wait tables every night he can build a content creation business called coffee with Ken and keep my eyes open, uh, for any better opportunity. So that would be my plan right now. And if you want to listen to a guy who's 56, who's waiting tables, who's talking on TikTok, and who's keeping his eyes open, I got a lot of advice for you. Uh, well, I do have a degree in finance. Hank Hoover wants to know, what's a record night waiting tables? Hold on here. Let me go get some more coffee. Let me get some more coffee. Uh, record night waiting tables in Yellowstone, my record night, it might've been a double shift day, but I made more than $400. Uh, I've seen waiters make $600, uh, that I've worked with and we're not working at a, you know, the finest restaurant in the world or Chicago or anything like that. And, uh. Uh, but without working a crazy number of, I mean, is 10 hours a crazy shift? It almost isn't waiting tables because you're moving around and walking around and on your feet for 10 straight hours. So that's a long shift. Uh, well, you know, you know, making more than $300 isn't that rare, you know, or over $200 is fairly common. And so I make between one hundred and fifty and three hundred dollars most nights. I'd say. Big Daddy followed the live creator. Thank you. Do I wish I made different career decisions? Ah, uh, no, not really. I mean, do my friends that made different <laughs> career decisions have more money than me? Oh yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I was a stockbroker. I enjoyed, I mean, I didn't love that experience, but it was an interesting story to tell. I was a realtor. Uh, I wouldn't do real estate again, but would I go back and change it, take it out of who I am? I don't think so, because uh, it's really part of who I am. Uh, would I do it again? No. <laughs> I said it before, I worked in uh, at a super target at, right after I left real estate. And I think it takes longer, <laughs> more time than I had to move up the corporate ladder at a lot of corporations. And I was starting at the low rung. And both of my bosses ahead of me had been there for like 15 or 18 years or something like that. I would have made more money 
over that 17 year period had I started at any other position, I think. Uh, but real estate's a lot tougher business than most people know. You know, I tried really hard and did fairly okay. And that's the truth about that. Ashley, thank you so much for following the live creator. Nancy asked if I feel lonely. I don't think so. Uh, I used to. Five and a half years ago. Okay, this is a perfect segue. <laughs> Five and a half years ago, um, people will hop on and, and <laughs> call me a narcissist or conceited or a jerk or laugh at me for calling this a show. And I think it's kind of funny. I never set out to do a show. That wasn't my plan. That wasn't how this started. I posted on Facebook five and a half years ago a post that said, hey, kind of feeling down, but I'm at the gym working out and it feels good. And I had a ton of people. I'm fortunate to have a lot of friends and a lot of people who care about me reach out and post a comment on that post going, oh, I'm sorry you're feeling bad. I, I hope you're doing okay. You know, well wishes. And that was on a Friday, like in June, five and a half years ago. And I was so overwhelmed uh, by all those comments and all that feedback and all that pouring out of emotion towards me or that sadness. And my post wasn't intended as a woe is me post. It was saying, hey, I'm feeling down. I'm a human. And I'm doing something good about it. I'm not at the bar. I'm not doing drugs. I'm not at the casino, but I'm at the gym uh, working out and am proud of that. And I couldn't verbalize that <laughs> in one simple post on Facebook. So um, I turned the camera on. <clears throat> I'd always, I'd use video for a long time. Uh, sent a lot of video texts and use, uh, video in my real estate marketing and I always felt comfortable talking on the camera and I pushed uh, go and started talking to the camera saying hey friends and family it's Ken I posted this post yesterday but I just want you know to know I'm doing okay um, I was just hurting a little bit yesterday and although I have a big smile and a positive attitude. Sometimes I hurt and cry and feel bad too. And just wanted to comment that I was doing something healthy. And the video might've been two or three minutes long. And I uh, posted it. And it got a ton of people watching. A ton of people watched it. I go, wow, oh, hey. Uh. You know, and a lot of people came up to me and said, oh, how brave that was, or this or that. And I'm like, huh. <laughs> Next Saturday, I was sitting there, and I go, hey, it's Saturday morning. I'm in a dark apartment. I'm feeling lonely. I've still got anxiety and all these thoughts and feelings. What would happen if instead of just posting a video, I went live? And I went live, and I started talking. And uh, I don't know how many viewers I had at that time but I posted it to various social media platforms and shared it. And my audience started growing. I go, why? I don't even know what's happening here. But these lives get a lot of viewership. People must be craving it, must need it, must want it, must be lonely. Must be struggling with anxiety or financial issues or relationship issues or what have you. So one thing led to another, and I started doing a, day, or a Saturday live show on a different social media platform for a while. And uh, it's kind of evolved and become whatever it is today. But five and a half years later, I'm still doing, uh, now I do a daily live show between whenever I wake up. <laughs> I've done it in various locations. I mean, really various locations. And since I've started, I've been, I got married. I've had two beautiful children. I've gotten divorced. I've ridden to Yellowstone. I've been at Super Target. I've rented a home. I've rented a different home. I've stayed in an extended stay. And I've had a whole 
heck of a lot of uh, adventures over the last five and a half years. And when you add up all your adventures, uh, it's what your life is. So, do I wish I made different career decisions? Mm, no. But if I was taken back, would I make the same? Probably not. Uh, honestly, I think I would have started doing this content creation sooner. Uh, I wouldn't have become a realtor. Uh, I probably would have been a... Eh, yeah, yeah. I don't think I do great as an employee. I don't think I do great as an employee. And I think most of my friends have found a massive success working them their way up the corporate ladder. And I think I would have struggled in that setting. I think I would have struggled in that setting and I might not have moved up the corporate ladder. I think I have maybe to a fault an entrepreneurial spirit uh, or a feeling that I can change the world or make a difference or change a corporation or change things uh, to a fault. And I think working as an employee, I may have uh, struggled uh, most of my life. And I don't want to struggle. <laughs> so I tried entrepreneurial jobs. I tried being a stockbroker and I did it. I mean, I didn't try. I did it 10 years. And I tried being a realtor and I didn't try. I did it for 17 years. And I did okay. Uh, Alexandra Hope said, I'm in sales and I'm really needing to change careers mentally and emotionally, but so hard to change. Well, Alexandra, uh, maybe you don't have to change all today, but maybe you can dust off your resume and look at it. You don't even have to rewrite it today, but maybe you can find it on your computer and look at it and read through it and go, hey, I haven't updated this for two and a half years. Uh, I've done all these things over the last two and a half years. You know, I won an award, I switched jobs, I got more responsibility or whatever. And dust off your resume and maybe take a look at it today. And maybe that's your start. You need to uh, get the wheels turning and get moving forward. Yeah, it is small steps. Because right now you're looking at it as you have a job. You're paid. You know what you're doing. You know where to go and how to do it. But you're going to have to totally change careers. You don't have to totally change careers uh, today. You don't have to totally change anything today, uh, but you move forward a little bit and just opening up your computer and reading your resume and going, hey, this, this, and this could be a little different. Might be get the juices flowing. And then tomorrow you might call a friend that works for another company or get on Indeed or do a little research into something else. And... Uh, uh, I don't know, your feet will start moving and you'll start going forward and you'll start feeling a little better. Uh, yeah. Because you'll be on the path. You'll be on the path. I'm in an extended stay. It's not glorious living, but it's okay and I'm thankful for it. But I think I'm on the path to wherever I want to get. I'm on the right path. And I think getting on the right path is the key to uh, feeling content. Uh, doesn't matter where you are, it matters where you're headed. And uh, just going, hey, I'm here, but I'm going this way is going to make you feel a little better. Well, thank you, Dudley. Highland says money definitely isn't everything, but it sure makes life easier. It sure does. It sure does. And I'll tell you what, I'm ready for a little easierness in life, a little ease in my day. And uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for following the live creator. Uh, Mike King says he's mid-50s and we went from 200K to 50K a year. Hard to start over at 55. Yeah, it is, Mike. But again, I'd say the same thing to you. If um, 
you don't have to start all over today. You know, you can just do a little something today. And whether it's calling a recruiter friend or touching base with somebody you used to work at or an old boss or something, or going to the gym or making your bed or going to church on Sunday or forgiving yourself or whatever. Uh, Yeah. Ricky's RV Life. Follow the live creator. Ricky's RV Life. I'm going to follow you. I am going to follow you. Because I've got a little care about RVs and might need to pick your brain at some point uh, over it. I wonder if you're living in an RV or if you sell RVs. I considered selling RVs and I considered living in RVs. I wonder how both would be. I wonder how both would be. Queen B, thank you so much for following the live creator. We've had a really nice audience today. You live in an RV. All right. Charlie Starr, I'm 63, an artist. Healthy, happy, young at heart, doing what I love, still have youth. Way to go, Charlie Starr. Way to go. That's awesome to hear. Uh, Doing what you love and feeling youthful. What did I dislike about my career as a realtor? Uh Uh-huh. What did I dislike about it? I think I, well, partially, a bunch of things. First of all, I thought my number one job was uh, finding people to work for. I think the, and they call it lead gen. And they say, if you, you need to be talking to, have 20 conversations about real estate every day. And that's to generate leads. And I think the primary job of a realtor is to generate business. And maybe that's true for any business. But I think the time I spent working with sellers or buyers was 10% of the time uh, that I spent. The other 90% was spent trying to find clients to work for. And it's a highly competitive business and there's a lot of realtors. And I didn't, I didn't like telling people I was a realtor. I didn't want to meet somebody at a coffee shop and tell them I'm a realtor. I almost felt that put up a barrier between me and other people because suddenly I was a salesman and they were a customer. And I'd rather meet somebody at a coffee shop and uh, uh, just have them be a person sitting next to me going through life than a potential customer or me as a potential salesman. There were other issues, I mean, I found it hard to feel productive. When I switched from real estate to Target, it felt really good, uh, really good just having a job to go to. And even though I was only making 15, 50 an hour, I went in and I knew what I needed to do every day and it felt good. Uh, Evan Blake says business outside of business. Highland says housing is so expensive. Lisa Smith, sounds like you are a real estate influencer. Perhaps I was Lisa Smith. Perhaps that I was. It's funny, I post uh, pictures about real estate on uh, uh, social media from time to time. And I get a ton of people asking if I'm back in real estate or why I should go back in real estate. And I don't want to. But I want to be able to post pictures of real estate from time to time. And I think people like looking at real estate. And I like getting an audience talking and not feeling like I'm trying to buy or have them use me as a realtor and just be a guy. How did my interview go the other day? It went real well, Alexander. I'm not sure if it's the right fit, uh, but it went really well. So thank you for asking. Uh, Well, we're picking up a bunch of people following the creator. Uh, This might sound delusional. Uh, It does sound delusional. I I struggle it. I uh, struggle saying it. Uh, 
But I think uh, TikTok's starting to work for me and it's starting to grow and it's starting to form some sort of business model. And uh, that kind of feels exciting. And when I see a video that I post that's five minutes long that had 43,000 views in less than a day uh, and 43,000 views when I went live this morning and I'll bet it'll have north of 50,000. Uh, it's kind of exciting to me. Adrian wants to know if I'm ever going to tell us what the job was for that interview. I don't know, Adrian. Highland wants to know, has anyone made an offer yet with all my interviews? Mm, not one that I accepted. Uh, Charlie Starr said that. I don't believe that, Charlie Starr. Highland and I disagree on that. I'm not even going to talk about that. I'm not even going to talk about that. Uh, well, we've had a nice audience today. Uh, they say they're definitely pushing out my videos. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Like six months ago, suddenly my audience went from growing to stopped. To stopped. And it wasn't the quality of content. It was the same content. But my videos I was doing six months ago weren't being seen. And uh, suddenly... Uh, over the last month or so, some of my longer videos are getting seen a lot. And they're compensating me for it. And I go, well, this seems fair. I like that. How old am I, Redbone wants to know. I'm 56 years old. 56. And I have two-thirds of a pot of uh, coffee uh, ahead of me. And I got a bag full of apples and I have a busy day today. Uh, Dudley says he lives in Naperville. Well, welcome, welcome here, uh, Dudley. I hope you follow my page and hope you enjoyed my videos. And you used to see me during my realtor days. That's funny. Yeah, I know a lot of people in Naperville. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I was a realtor for a long time here and I'm pretty outgoing and I'm kind of hard to miss. So, and I'm waiting tables here now. So almost every day, at least, you know, I have somebody come in that knows me. And that kind of feels good, kind of feels funny, but it's all cool. It's part of life. Um, yeah. Well, Ronnie, you have a great day as well. And I want to thank you all for joining today. I've uh, usually talk, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour. I could talk longer. Sorry to hear that. Tech Packer says they're going through a divorce now. Uh, I'll just say I'm sorry to hear that. I've been through two, and they're uh, the hardest experiences uh, I've been through, uh, especially if you have kids, uh, especially if you have kids. And, uh, you know, keep going and keep moving forward. And, uh, uh, yeah. Tech Packers doesn't have kids. And as hard as it is with kids, the four things I know I don't regret in life, I know I don't regret, are uh, my four beautiful children. As complicated as children have, especially children in a divorce, uh, I don't regret them. And uh, even if I don't see them nearly as often, as I'd like, or I should, or I wish I could, uh, because I'm not in a position uh, to. Um, I'm thankful for them. So, uh, yeah. One more sip of coffee, unless <laughs> somebody says something real juicy that keeps me talking. It's not hard to keep me talking. Mm. Oh. Well, guys, I want to thank you so much for joining on this Tuesday morning. I very much appreciate you. I hope your week started out well. I hope you had a great, great night's sleep. Um, hope you're excited about your Tuesday. 
Hope you're living in the moment a little bit. Kind of looks like a cloudy day. If it's a cloudy day, find a way to be thankful for the clouds. Be thankful for the rain. If it's a sunny day, be thankful for the sun. Find something to be grateful for, and I promise you, uh, your day's going to go a little uh, uh, bit easier, and uh, you're going to smile a little bit more and laugh a little bit more and sing a little bit more, and you, you find yourself crying a little bit more. Be thankful for the tears just the same. So I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. I hope you are feeling good. I hope you are loving yourself. I hope you are forgiving yourself. And as always, uh, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.